Dear Mom, I want to wish you a very happy 79th birthday. I'm sorry I can't be there this year to say it in person. It has been one of the most unusual few weeks we have ever had here at the 7th Street Theater. In fact, the events that have occurred can only make a person do one thing, and that's trust God. He is in control, and that's good enough for me. I think. It all started a little over two weeks ago on a Thursday morning. Hey, Gates. What's up? Hey, Kelly, you here early this morning. Uh-huh. Girl, what have you done to your hair? What do you mean? Well, it's back blonde again, and it looks a little shorter. You're so observant. <laughs> so, what's going on? What do you mean? Well, is it back blonde for good? Uh-huh. Why? No, let me guess. Uh, the mood just hit you, and you wanted to make a change. Uh-huh. <laughs> what is it with you women? You change your minds about every two seconds. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, has anybody else seen it yet? Andy has, but the guys haven't. Well, they will surely be surprised. All right. Well, I'm off to my dressing room. Just wanted to stop by and say hi. You just wanted to stop by so I could see your hair. Uh-huh. <laughs> Hey, Kelly. Looks good. Thanks. Hey, Travis. This is the lineup for this week's show. Ah, oh, thanks, Rudy. We're gonna end with you and Kelly's scene. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure what to close with, but I think the way the years ends, it'll work for what we're doing this week, so why not? Yes. Why not, Rudy? I do hope it will work. <laughs> Hey, did you see Kelly's new look? No, what'd she do? She's a blonde again. What? Yep. What is it with that girl? First she's blonde, then she's red, then she's blonde again? Shorter, too. Is it as short as Gates? Hey, Mr. Wheeler. <laughs> Didn't expect to see you. Well, I was just on my way home and thought I'd stop and take a chance to see if anybody was still here. I'm afraid I'm the only one left. I was just finishing up some lighting cues. How's the show looking for this week? Everything's coming together. We should be in good shape, I think. Good. Glad to hear it. Is everything all right? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Everything's fine. I just got something I want to talk to everybody about that I feel is very interesting. Okay. I just wish I'd have gotten here sooner to catch everybody. <laughs> What's going on? Well, a very good friend of mine in Florida is starting a ministry, just like ours. He's been to see our show, and he and I have been talking for weeks, and he really feels God is leading him to do this. That's interesting. Yeah, he bought a theater. It's a little bit bigger than ours, and he was wondering if uh, two or three of our people could go down there and help him get it started. Oh, go down there? What? I don't understand. Well, it'll just be for a couple of weeks, you know, just to help him get going. The well, war's down. <laughs> if we're missing two or three people, we're going to be pretty short-handed. I'm aware of that, but... You know, Rudy, this is something I've always imagined could happen with this ministry, that we could somehow expand and touch other cities. Oh, and here's the kicker in it for you. Theater's in Tampa. Really? Yeah. Well, you could visit with your mother and the rest of your family. And I thought Andy could go down since her family recently moved to St. Petersburg. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. And we could send one of the guys, maybe Seth or Travis, since Gates is married and he wouldn't want to be away from his wife. <laughs> well, what about the show here? Well, it's only going to be for a couple of weeks. Now, if we could get one of your old professors to come in and help with the lighting, I think we could manage with two guys and Kelly for a couple of shows. Well, I did not expect this. Well, I know this is coming out of left field, but I want you to think about it. And I'll visit with the others tomorrow night after the show to see who's interested. Now, he wants to get started right away, so he's hoping some of you can come down early next week. Okay. Well, you're the man that makes the decisions around here. <laughs> it's going to be fine, Rudy. Now just look at it this way. 7th Street Theater is expanding. <laughs> Can you break 100? I need to get some gas. 
Yes, ma'am, I have change. Oh, you don't need to use the marker, it's real. Oh, we have to check all bills that are over $20, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, I said it was real. Well, it's no disrespect, ma'am, but we still have to check every bill over $20. Do I look like a con artist or something? No, no, you do not. Good, because it's real, so can you just break the hundred for me? Yes, I can cash it. All right, I'll take it in 20s. Five twenties, I can do that. There you go with the marker again. Ma'am, it's like I told you, it is something that I have to do. Oh, so you don't believe me? It's not that I don't believe you, ma'am, it's just a precaution. I mean, how do you know it's real? Have you checked it? Listen, I'm an honest person, okay? Are you gonna break the hundred for me or not? Yes, but after I check to see if the bill is real. I said it was real. But you're giving me every indication that it is not. Why else would you get upset? I'm not upset. I just don't understand you people. Listen, I just want the hundred broken, okay? Seems pretty simple to me. The Lord is the one who knows the truth here. I do not, but he does. The Lord? The Lord Jesus Christ, ma'am. Just break the hundred for me, will ya? If you ask the Lord into your life, he can help you. <laughs> help me what? How about helping me by breaking the hundred? If I can check it first. I don't believe this. That hundred dollars is fake, isn't it, ma'am? But what I told you about the Lord is not. He can help you. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fake. You probably think I'm some sort of big sinner, huh? We're all sinners, ma'am. That is why we need a savior. The Lord Jesus Christ. I am no different than you. Except I have received him into my life. Now what about you? <laughs> no. Haven't received anything. Especially not change for my hundred. Would you like to receive him right now? What? Would you like to receive the Lord into your heart right now? Why? Because like I said, he can help you. Why don't you pray and ask the Lord into your heart right now? And he can take what is fake and make it real. I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm talking about the Lord God, ma'am. We can bow our heads and you can say a prayer and I will help you. So please, you need the Lord in your life, ma'am. And that way you won't have to come in here and do what you tried to do. Mr. Wheeler did talk to all of us after the show on that Friday night. And after a lengthy discussion, Rudy, Andy, and Seth agreed to go down to Florida. So on Monday afternoon, they left for two weeks, which meant that we were here with two shows to prepare, just the three of us. It was going to be Kelly, Travis, and me doing all the scenes. And one of the professors from the university that Rudy knew would be helping with the lighting. Hey, Gates. What do you say, Joanna? Not much. Going to be pretty quiet around here this week. Yeah, I'll say. Are you going to be able to do the show with just the three of you? Well, Mr. Willis seems to think so. We're going to give it a try. Well, if anybody can pull it off, Gates, it's you, Travis, and Kelly. Well, thank you. And speaking of moi, Travis, and Kelly, is there any way you can pull up the list of scenes that the three of us have done since we've been here? Sure, I have them all in my database. Great, great. All I need is just the names of them. That'll help. OK, well, give me a few minutes, and I'll have that for you. OK, thanks. OK, guys. Here is a list of the scenes that we've done in all the shows since we've been here. You and me, you and Travis, Travis and me, the three of us together. You know, I really like Mr. Wheeler's idea about us doing an assortment of scenes from past shows because that way you don't have to learn and write a whole bunch of new stuff. Mm, so do I. Well, we've got to prepare two shows, one for this week and next. So what we need to do is to pick scenes with a particular theme like we usually do. Gotcha. Hey, Kelly. Do you remember this scene where you were flying from Germany to Spain? Oh, yeah. I really liked doing that scene. Yeah, we must have done that like a year ago. Oh, and here's the scene that you and I did in the cab where your great aunt died. Remember that one? 
Oh, yeah, she was really loaded. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all these scenes that you guys have done together. Yeah, and I carried Gates in every one of them, too. Uh, what was that? Uh, I just said that uh, Gates carried every one of the scenes that he and I did, too. <laughs> I thought that's what you said. <laughs> okay, guys, so which ones are we gonna do this week? Well, I say we just lay all the cards on the table and try to play the best hand. Oh, here's one that you've got to do. Which one? It's the one where you take the cab ride, you know, where you're going for the divorce. Oh yeah, I like that one. Yeah, me too. Mark that one down for sure. Yeah, yeah, things are fine. But it seems very different though without you guys here, that's for sure. <laughs> Same there, huh? Uh-huh. Okay. Well, just keep me posted because we're all interested to know how things are going for you guys down there. Mm -hmm. Let's see, today we worked on all the scenes that the three of us have done and put together a tentative schedule for this week and next week's shows. Yeah. Hey, we don't mess around up here, Rudy. <laughs> yeah, well, this week we're gonna end the show with the airline scene between Travis and Kelly, and we're gonna end next week's show with the uh, cab scene between Kelly and me, the, the one about divorce. We try to group the scenes together in uh, some sort of theme for each show. Yeah, I think it's gonna work. Okay, I'll email them down to you. Sure thing, we'll do, Rudy. All right, stay in touch, okay. Hey, Joanna. Hey, Travis. Here's the lineup for this week's show and next week's show. Wow, you got them all ready. Yeah, well, it's pretty easy when you're just picking scenes you've already done. Gotcha. So can you email those to Rudy? Let them take a look at it make sure they're all right? Yes, I'll be glad to. I just talked to Seth. They're all just sitting around the pool at their hotel, taking it easy. Travis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Actually, Rudy is setting up all the lights. Andy and Seth are auditioning actors. They want to do their first show in two weeks. I know. I emailed them some scripts this morning so they could have something to choose from. Hey, that'll help. I never thought of that. Pretty cool having two 7th Street theaters, eh, Travis? Yes, it is. But what is the name of the theater down there? I don't know. I didn't ask. It's not 7th Street Theater, is it? No, because the address of the theater is on Travis Connors Boulevard. <laughs> good one, Joanna. That was a good one. <laughs> That first show without Andy, Seth, and Rudy actually went very well, Mom. I was surprised when you considered the fact that half our team wasn't here. The professor from the university was really good and hit every lighting and sound cue, so the Lord helped us there and got us through. The plan was that Rudy, Andy, and Seth would stay down in Florida for two weeks, so that meant that we had to do another show with just the three of us. So we worked all week on our scenes, but the good part was that every one of them was something we had done before. When the time came to end the second show, Kelly and I did our cab scene. Empire State Building. Yes, ma'am. You married? Pardon me, ma'am? Have you ever been married? No, ma'am. Mm, you're lucky. Take my advice, don't. I'm actually on the way to my attorney's office right now to sign divorce papers. Can't wait for this to be final. I'm sorry to hear that, ma'am. Sorry to hear what? About you getting a divorce. Don't be. I couldn't be happier. Sorry, ma'am, but I can't believe that. You can't believe what? What you just said. Oh, about being happier? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> That's true. This could turn out to be one of the greatest days of my life. I'm sorry, but I have to differ. Now, if you knew the man that I'd been married to for the last six years, <laughs> you wouldn't be saying that. Did you have any children, ma'am? Yes, we have two children. Oh my, then I am truly sorry. They'll be all right. 
but you said you couldn't be happier. That's right. I believe that the Lord wants you to stay married. Excuse me? I believe that the Lord wants you to stay married. There's nothing that could make me stay married to that man. What if I could give you a couple of reasons to stay married? You couldn't give me one reason to stay married to him. No disrespect, ma'am, but I can't. All right, by all means. Tell me why I should stay married to him. Because on your wedding day, you said, I do. And he said, I do. And everybody was happy then. Okay. So, if everybody was happy then, that means that everybody can be happy now. The only thing is that the devil has caused damage and tried to break up your marriage and your family. <laughs> okay. I get it now. You're some sort of religious nut, aren't you? No, ma'am. I'm just a cab driver who's trying to follow the light. Oh, good. You keep following him as long as he takes us to the Empire State Building. Yes, ma'am. We're almost there. Good. May I ask you a question, ma'am? What's that? Who is the one who wants the divorce? I filed for the divorce. May I ask why? There aren't enough hours in the day to tell you all the reasons. What about the vows you made on your wedding day? Did you mean them? Yes. Absolutely. So why are you getting a divorce? This is where I need to get out. What do I owe you? The fare is $16. There, keep the change. Thank you, ma'am. And I am sorry if I said anything to upset you. Yeah, actually, you did. It's okay, though. I'll get over it as soon as I sign the papers. Uh, may I ask you one more question? Sure. What is your husband's first name? Why? I would just like to know. Robert. His name is Robert. Robert? Is, is that what you call him? No, I call him Bob. Well, Bob loves you. And he does not want to get a divorce from you. And he is sorry for anything he has said or done to hurt you, or your marriage, or your children. And he wants you to give him a second chance to prove that he can be a good husband and father. Do you think that's funny? You don't even know my husband. But I do, ma'am. He was in my car earlier today, in fact. I dropped him off at the same stop, and he was crying. He was crying because he loves you and wants you to always be his wife. Bob, my Bob, lives in Philadelphia, and we've been separated for over a year. Well, I'm sorry, ma'am. It must have been some other Bob. I'm sorry. Excuse me. What you said about Bob, I really wish that that were true. The Lord can make it true, ma'am. If you would just pray and wait. Sometimes 
it takes God a long time to get things right again. But he would not let someone down who waits on him. Most people don't wait on the Lord. And that is why they miss out on the blessings. I believe that Bob wants to have a good marriage with you. You don't know my husband. But I do. He's the one that's hoping for a second chance. I've given him a second chance, and a third, and a fourth. The Bible says that love never fails. Never fails. Can you take me back? I need to go back. For real, ma'am? I forgot something. What is that, ma'am? My wedding vows. It all seemed to go well again tonight, Rudy. I cannot believe we've done two shows without you guys. Travis is standing right next to me, and neither one of us knows how we did it. It was God, man. That's all it was. <laughs> Kelly, Kelly did a great job. Hey, even Travis remembered most of his lines. <laughs> the sound and lighting cues were there, too. Yeah, God blessed us, man. So how are things going down there with you guys? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sounds like they're going great. Yep. Yeah. Am I sitting down? Actually, I am. Why? Huh? What? What is it? What? What is it? I don't believe it. What? I can't believe what Rudy just told you on the phone a few minutes ago. Neither can I. Two weeks ago, Mr. Willow comes in and tells us he has a good friend who wants to start a ministry like 7th Street Theater down in Florida, somewhere near Tampa. He wants to know if a few of us would go down for a couple of weeks and help him get started. Well, since Rudy and Andy have family there, they go and Seth goes alone to help him. That leaves Kelly, you and me here to do the show. With a little help from the professor on the lights. Right. So while Rudy's setting up the lighting, Andy and Seth audition actors. Now they select some, but not all. We do two shows up here without them. Now, Rudy is saying that he's coming back Monday, but Andy and Seth will be there for at least another couple of weeks, possibly prominently. Did Rudy say which way they're leaning? No, but he said Seth would be doing the lighting and Andy would be one of the actresses. Well, I could see why Andy might want to stay. I mean, she has family down there now. Yeah, and they do need Seth for the lighting. And since they're both single, why not move? This, if this happens, it's unbelievable. That leaves only Kelly, you, and me here. And Rudy's coming back. Yeah, and Rudy. Wow. I can't believe Andy might be staying down there. <laughs> well, believe it, because it's true. Yeah, but she's got a house up here and a good job. A job she likes, I might add. But she does have family down there, and that could be a factor. Yeah, but I don't think she would move down there just for that. I don't know. Okay, maybe. Well, maybe the theater just wants them there to help get things going, and they'll both come back. So let's not jump to conclusions. We'll just wait till Rudy gets back, and I'm sure we'll get the whole scoop from him. Yeah. In the meantime, we've got to do another show with just the three of us. Yeah. Well, we've used most of the scenes that we've done together for these last two. Well, I wrote something new last night for Kelly and me to do in the show this week. Well, that's good. I can start working on something. Yeah, me too. Well, looks like vacation is over. We're back at it again. Here you go, Kelly. This is the scene I wrote last night. Thanks, Gates. Kelly, a college student, approaches her professor. A college student. I like it. <laughs> well, you still look like a college student to me. 
Well, Gates, you got quite a way with the ladies. Well, what can I say? Anyhow, you look it over and we'll run through it later on today. The theme is honesty, and I figure we could try to pull some other scenes that relate. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm trying to write something new right now. Yeah, Travis is too. Rudy's due back this afternoon. It sure has been quiet around here without those guys. Yes, it has. But, as they say, the show must go on. Onward, Christian soldier. I hear you. Hey, everybody. Hey, hey Rudy. Rudy. Say, Rudy, how was your trip? Oh, it was good. It was good. Got to see everybody. No, my mom had everybody over to the house for a big meal. It was great. Well, we're glad to have you back, man. They see you've been gone, what, uh, two weeks? Seems more like two months. Yeah, it's good <laughs> to see you again, man. It's good to see you guys and lady. Thank you. So, Rudy, give us a scoop. What's going on down there? Well, you know, it's a really nice theater. They've got 318 seats, so they're a little bit bigger than we are. Uh, they've got all new equipment, lights and board, and uh, their dressing rooms are right there on the same level as the stage. The green room's about twice the size of ours. What about the scene design area? They've got one of those, too. It's a good size. You know, we pretty much set up things down there exactly the way they are here. So what did Andy and Seth do? Well, they watched a bunch of auditions, and they picked out some cast members. The owner there is wanting to go with five actors just like we've got here. And they were able to find two ladies and two guys, so Seth and Andy started working with them and seemed to gel with them really well. Um, Seth actually was helping me setting up the lights and did such a good job, the owner asked if he'd stay around to help them a little bit longer and ask Andy to do the same. So they talked to Mr. Wheeler and said it just seemed like the right thing to do for them to stay down there and help them out while we keep things going here. So just like that, they're both going to stay? Well, no, not necessarily. We don't know what they're going to do permanently, but right now they're just trying to get their first show off the ground. They go up this weekend. Can't believe Andy might not be coming back. Yeah, and Seth too, man. We just got used to him being around here. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. I mean, just give him a call later, talk to him. Oh, we will. Don't worry about that. <laughs> well, look, nobody's trying to cause any problems here. It's just that theater, they're on the ground floor, so they're glad to have any help they can get. And the owner is really grateful to have them down there helping a little bit longer. Well, when we call down there, we'll let them know how hard it's been doing these shows the last couple of weeks since they've been gone, and tell them they've got one week to get back up here. <laughs> is Mr. Wheeler troubled by all of this? You know, I don't think so. He said, it just seems like this is the way the Lord works sometimes. Things seem to be going great, and then sudden change comes along. Yeah, I understand that. God does things for his purposes, and we don't always understand what he's doing. You know, that's why we need to walk by faith and not by sight. But in the end, we'll see some good results. Well, Rudy, what are we supposed to do here? Well, I don't really want to think about it, but you know, we may need to look at some other talent to see about trying to fill their shoes. You've got to be kidding. Just in case. We don't know what's going to happen long term, but we should be prepared. You know what this feels like to me? It feels like a high school basketball team that's losing two players to graduation. And we're the three returning players. But it seems like last year's team is better because of the missing players. You take Andy and Seth out of this starting lineup, that's two good players we just lost. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, but just like Rudy said, we might need to start thinking about their replacements. Yeah, but where? I mean, where are we going to find a replacement for Andy? I have no idea. And for Seth. There again, I have no idea. Wait. I do. You do? Yeah. He could at least help out with a few scenes, at least till Seth comes back. If he comes back? So, who you got in mind? All right, I don't think I'm crazy. What about Chad? Chad, the waiter? Yeah. Chad Ryan, the waiter from Fifth Avenue Cafe. Yeah, again. I mean, Chad's a nice guy. We all know him. He's always talking about acting. He won't act full time. I think it'd be good. Has anyone ever seen him act? Well, now, I know he's done a couple of plays around town, but I've never seen him act. Well, neither have I. Well, that's because we're always here. Well, plus he's a Christian. He's always asking about the show, and he's seen our show a lot. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So I think we should at least read him. Well, it sounds like we should give him a shot. Why don't you guys go meet with him and see what he can do? Okay. We'll see him at lunch, so we'll set up something. Now, what do we do about Andy's spot? We don't need to worry about replacing Andy just yet. Why is that? Because I'm going to do the best acting job of my life and get her to come back here. <laughs> hey, Joanna. I heard we might be losing Seth and Andy. Who told you? Gates, Travis, or Kelly? All three of them. Yeah, they're not wild about losing them. Neither am I. We're like a family around here. I know, but hey, kids grow up, they leave the nest. Thanks, Rudy. You know what I mean. I know. Although, you know, they're still just thinking about it. It's not definite yet. 
I hope they don't leave. I hope so too. I mean, they're being a big help down there getting that show started. Um, meanwhile, though, we need to move forward up here. Any suggestions? Well, I think before we start calling talent agencies, we want to see if we can find anybody we already know that can come on board. Gates and Travis had lunch with Chad, and he's interested. Yeah, he's coming in tomorrow to read for him. I hope you can help. At least we already know him. I hope so, too. Now all we need to do is find somebody for Andy's spot. Well, Mom, I know this has been a long email, but I wanted to give you the full rundown. From what we can tell, Seth and Andy might be staying down in Florida and working with a new theater there, while the rest of us try to keep it going up here. If that's the case, we'll have to try and find somebody to replace both of them. And that's not going to be easy. It's really hard doing the show with just three people, so we'll have to solve this dilemma soon. We do have one guy coming in today that we all know, and hopefully that might work out. We'll see. I'll keep you posted. I love you, and I'll call you soon. John. Morning, Gates. Morning, Trevor. You're here early. Well, I woke up early, so I decided to just come on in. What you doing? I just emailed my mom. It's her 79th birthday today, and I normally go over and be with her, but when all this come down with Andy and Seth, I decided to just stay here. Yeah, I hear you. You know, it's going to be different around here without those two, especially Andy. Yeah, she's been here since we started. Yeah, I'm going to miss Seth, too. Yeah, I'm with you. But right now, we need some help, so I hope Chad works out. Well, at least for now. Yeah. I wrote something last night. I think we can use it this week. Well, that's good. Kelly wrote two new scenes yesterday. You know, that girl being fourth in her class can sure write and come up with some scenes, can't you? Yeah, if we lost Kelly, that'd be a big blow, because she writes a lot of stuff. Yeah, well, I'm glad she's staying. Yeah, me too. Okay, man. Onward, Christian soldier. <laughs> that's the same thing Kelly said yesterday. Really? <laughs> yeah, really. Okay, well, Andy, let me just say that as one of your best friends in the entire world, I really don't appreciate you leaving me here all alone. Yes, Gates and Travis are still here. <laughs> yeah, they're great. So, when are you coming back? Two weeks, ugh. That doesn't sound very convincing. We need you here. I need you here. Oh, come on, you know how hard it is to find the right actors for this show. I know, so get on a plane and come back up here. <laughs> I'm in the dressing room. No, nobody else is here. Well, what's wrong? What? Really? What's his name? Okay, Chad. Now that you've had the big tour of Sam Street Theater. Uh, which took all of about two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> this is the main stage. This is where it all takes place, my friend. Every Friday and Saturday night. And maybe, just maybe, instead of watching it from out there, millions of people. Millions? Okay, hundreds of people <laughs> will get to see you do your thing from this end. Now, what do you think about that? I think just the chance to be on the same stage as you two guys? Well, could I have your autographs? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but first you must pass the John Gates and Travis Connors audition test. And let me tell you, my friend, that is no easy task. <laughs> Chad, don't listen to him. Look, from what we've seen you do just as our waiter, I know you're going to get an A. I always knew all of my acting in front of you two would pay off one of these days. <laughs> you know, this could work out pretty well. You could keep your job as a waiter and come by and help us out some until Seth gets back. If Seth gets back. He'll be back. He'll be back. Seth likes our soup and salad special way too much. He gets it every time he comes over. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> okay, so now you'll be able to come by every day after your lunch shift, right? Correct. That'll work. All right, let's get some scenes and try to do some reading. Okay. All right, let me ask you something, Chad. 
If this does work out and you can start here, does that mean that we will all get to have free food from the Fifth Avenue Cafe? You know, I'll tell you how you can get free food at the Fifth Avenue Cafe. How? Well, when you go in and order, just pay the price that's on the menu and they'll give you your food for free. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jed. Uh, this is going to be a scene that Seth did the last time he was here. So you just read yours there, and I'll say mine here. Look it over a moment, and we'll give it a shot. Sounds good. So, uh, what scene you got there? It's that convenience store scene, you know, where he came in and asked for directions. Oh, you see, we try to write new scenes every week, but for the past three weeks we've been so short-handed that we're doing what we call our greatest hits. I see. You ready to give it a shot? Sure, why not? All right, now you've already seen this set. This is the convenience store scene, so I'm going to be on the other side of the counter when you come in. Okay. Hey, buddy. I need some directions. I am trying to get to the McAllen Center oh, downtown. Yes, I know of the place you are speaking. Well, how do I get there? Do I stay on this road all the way to Park Ave and take a left? Okay, Chad, um, I, 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 are you really acting or are you just pulling our leg? I'm pulling your leg. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I sure hope you were pulling our leg because if you were really acting, then you'd get an F. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I just couldn't resist. Yeah, but you know what, Gates? We could always use some comedy in the show. We just have to find some actors who can be funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready to try it again? Sure, why not? All right. Hey, buddy, can you give me some directions? I'm trying to get to the McAllen Center downtown. Yes, I know the place you are speaking. Well, how do I get there? Do I stay on this road all the way to Park Ave and take a left? No, no, if you take a left, you'll be going the wrong way. So I take a right. Thanks, buddy. No, you do not take a right either. Look, buddy, you just said it's not a left, so it must be a right. Okay, how are we coming on those new scenes? I think okay. Yeah? Gates and I have worked out the scene where he's the professor and I'm the college student. Good, because that's what I want to close with. Ooh, that would be good. Plus, we have our other scenes down too, Rudy, so we're okay. And what you guys have been able to do, just the three of you, is amazing. Rudy, like I told you, we've been amazed the past two weeks. And we got Chad to help us out next week if Seth isn't here. Oh yeah, how did that go? It went well. Yeah, we read through a number of scenes. I think Chad's gonna do good. That's good to hear. So now all that's left is to find someone that can replace Andy, because I don't think she's coming back. Why do you say that? I have a feeling. Yeah, but why do you say that? I just have a feeling. Travis, you know how women are. They uh, have that feeling, and she's got that feeling. So Kelly, why do you say that? Andy met someone. What? Yeah. Kelly, you're kidding me. No. I don't believe this. I thought she was done with guys. Oh, she was. Until she met someone. Who'd she meet? I think Rudy might be able to tell you more about that than I could. What's up, Rudy? Yeah, Rudy, I can't believe you didn't mention anything about this. I didn't know if there's anything to it or not. Look, one of the actors they brought in, I guess he and Andy really hit it off, and there's been some connection between them. But you didn't say anything about this earlier. Well, I just wanted to wait and see if it was going to develop or not. Oh, it's developing. So I don't think that we should count on her being back, at least for now. <laughs> How do you like that? I don't, because I'm going to miss Sandy if she stays. Well, regardless, they're going to be down there at least another couple of weeks. We know that much. So we'll have to do with what we've got and uh, do the best we can. Yeah, we're with you, Rudy. Man, I cannot believe that. Yeah, neither can I. Just the three of us lining up. Yeah, I know. Well, Chad will be here next week, so that'll help. And the week after that, we'll have another female, so that'll help even more. Who? I don't know. Gates, where are we going to get another female to help? I don't know, Travis, but God does. He knows we need someone. Yeah, her name is Andy. I don't think that's going to happen. You think she really likes this guy? Yeah. Yeah, and she's going to stay there because of it. Maybe. Well, God will provide. He'll take care of us. 
One thing I can say for you, Gates, you are a man of faith. Well, I have to be. If God can help Travis remember his line on stage, then God can provide us the actors and actresses we need for the show. All right, y'all. You ready? I'm about to go. Yeah. Oh, Miss Henderson, I'll see you in the last scene. Yes, Professor Johnson, you will. The Wheeler Theatrical Company presents the Seventh Street Theater, featuring the talents of. Yes. Professor Johnson? Yes? May I speak with you for a moment? For a moment. Sorry to interrupt you, sir. You already have. What is it? It's about my grade, Professor. You made a mistake. Miss... Henderson. Miss Henderson, your grade is your grade. Yes, Professor, but it's wrong. <laughs> Miss Henderson, do you know how many students at this university cheat? Answer the question. No, I don't. I've been here nearly 20 years, and I think that almost every student has tried cheating at one time or another. I'm not a cheater. They've gone to great lengths and tried every method of cheating to make their grades better. They've tried everything but the one thing that would bring them the best and most satisfying results, studying. Professor Johnson, I'm not a cheater. That's not why I'm here. I didn't say you were a cheater, Ms. Henderson. But they also come in here and try to get me to raise their grade. Since this is an essay-based course, they feel that I mark too hard. Well, I'm sorry. I mark the way I mark. Your grade stands. That is all. But, Professor... That is all, Ms. Henderson. I can't leave until you change my grade. As I recall, you made a pretty good grade on that essay. It was an A minus, is that right? Yes, sir. Is that not good enough? Or do you think you deserve an A? Every student who gets an A minus thinks that they deserve an A. What did you write about? I wrote about a missionary pilot in New Guinea. Oh yes, I remember. You had some structural problems about midway through. Yes, sir. Your grades in A minus. Have a good day. But professor. Have a good day. You added up my grade wrong. It should only be a B plus. Do you have your paper with you? Yes, sir. May I see it? Yes, sir. Well, I stand corrected. And my math escaped me this one time. According to these deductions, this paper should have received a B plus. Yes, sir. And you came down here to actually have your grade lowered? Yes, sir. Why would you do that, Miss Henderson? Because I'm a Christian, and it's the right thing to do. Well, I'm not a Christian. Sorry to hear that, sir. Thanks for your honesty. You're welcome. Professor, you changed my grade to an A, and it should only be a B plus. Your grade is your grade, Miss Henderson. Thank you, sir. Thank you. No, Miss Henderson. Thank you. Okay, Seth. Well, we're gonna miss you, man. Yeah, you keep in touch. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let me talk to her one more time. Well, Andy, I'm sure we'll be in touch from time to time. Yeah. 
And I pray God's blessings on both of you down there. Don't forget us up here. We love you guys. Yeah, I'll tell them. They're all sitting here waiting to hear. Okay. Bye-bye. Well, it's officially official. Seth and Andy are going to be staying down in Florida. Seth's going to do lighting. Andy's going to act in the show. And uh, at least for now, they're not going to be coming back. Why do all your worst fears always come true? <laughs> I've been praying really hard to God to bring both of them back, and now they're both staying. I'm with you, Travis. I'm with both of you. Well, the good news is the ministry down there is up and running, and we're still going here, so that's the bright side. Yeah, and you know, God did allow Paul and Barnabas to split up, and what people thought was a bad thing ended up being a good thing, and the message got out further. You know, when y'all went down to Florida, never expected any of this to happen. I don't think any of us did. Yeah, but now it has, and so we have to deal with our situation here. Rudy, we can't keep doing the show with just the three cast members. It really is too much. I know. You guys have done an amazing job these last four weeks. You really should be commended. Thanks, Rudy. Now we have to replace Seth and Andy. But I think that Seth is going to be the easy one to replace. Yeah, I agree. We could add Chad to the show. Yeah, he's helped us out. He's done a good job, too. And he wants to be more involved. You know, maybe he can keep his job as a waiter and work here part-time. Maybe, although I think Mr. Wheeler wants to hire people full-time. It really helps having them here since we've only got four days to put the whole show together. Well, I can tell you right now, Chad really wants to be here. And he'll quit his job at the cafe if we ask him to come on board full-time. Does Chad write? That I don't know. Yeah, but he's a good actor. And he's a Christian. We all know him. I think he's a good fit. Well, Kelly, you and Travis both good with asking him to join us? I'm good. I'm good, too. Everybody likes Chad. Well, Gates, why don't you and Travis talk to him, see if he wants in, and roll out the welcome mat. We'll do it. Now, to the other task at hand. Oh, I don't even want to think about it. Yeah, it's not going to be easy trying to find someone to replace Andy. Yeah, but we really do need another lady in the show. I mean, we've got some new scenes written that require two females. And to be honest, I just don't think Travis looks that good in a dress, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can have Joanna call some talent agencies, get some auditions in here. Yeah, you might as well, Rudy. Yeah. Well, now, no, wait a minute, guys. Just, just wait. Rudy, can I make a suggestion? Sure. Okay, replacing Seth is one thing. I mean, we all know Chad, and we've known him for quite some time. But bringing in a total stranger to replace Andy, that's, that's going to be tough. Now, I've been thinking that this might happen. And now that it has, I got a suggestion. Let's not put out a casting call to any talent agency. Let's don't tell anybody that we need an actress. Let's just tell God. I mean, we have a need for an actress. Let's just trust God for that need. What do you say, guys? Sounds like a great idea to me. Yeah, and I need to have my faith increased. And if God did something like that, that would do it. Kelly? I think it's an excellent suggestion. I'm all for it. Thanks, guys. Gates, why don't you lead us in a word of prayer and we'll commit it to the Lord? Sure. Dear Lord. Hey, Gates. Hey, Trev. How's it going? Well, it's going. You ready to go to lunch? I guess. You okay? You seem like you got a lot on your mind. I'm fine. Just thinking about Seth and Andy. Especially Andy, since she's been with us since we started. Yeah, I know. But at least we get to tell Chad the good news. Yeah, and I'm glad for him, because he really wants to work here. Yeah, he does. I think he'll do good. Yeah, me too. So... You working on a new script? Yeah. So what you got? Well, it's about a baseball player who thinks he's the greatest baseball player ever. It's an interview with him. Hmm, that sounds interesting. Goes along with our pride theme for this week. So who's the player? 
Well, I thought I'd get Chad to be the player. You know, he could use his New York accent. Hey. <laughs> yeah, he's got a good New York accent. And you could interview him. Well, thank you. Well, thank you very much. Uh -huh. All right, you ready to go? Because I'm hungry. Well, you know, you are always... Uh, don't even say it. Not a word. But you realize it's not the same without you here. Oh, especially for me, Andy. I just thought I'd tell you again. <laughs> now, come on, you don't have to explain. We understand. Oh, it's just, none of us saw this coming. Oh, we're all really happy for you. We just miss you. What? A gift? What kind of a gift? A postcard from Florida? That's a gift? Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, we'll keep an eye out for it. Hey, Rudy. Hey, did you hear the official news? Yep, they're staying in Florida. Word travels fast. Kelly told me. I feel like we just lost two-fifths of our team in the expansion draft. <laughs> That's a good analogy. Well, now that the decision's been made, we need to find ourselves two new players. Well, I think it's great that we're getting Chad. Yeah, I do too. Do you want me to call up some talent agencies and get some people over here to audition? Not yet. We're trying something first. What do you mean? Let me explain. Okay, Chad, during the day we have this table set here, and this is where we all meet first thing in the morning. Now, Travis sits there, I sit here, Kelly sits on that end, Andy sat beside her, and of course, this is where Jamie sat until he left, and then it became Seth. And now, Chad, that seat belongs to you. So, try it out for size. So, how does it feel? You know, guys, I always wondered if God was gonna open a door for me to act in something like this one day, and, well, I just wanna say thank you. I'm gonna work really hard and do the very best job that I can. Well, we know you are, Chad, and we appreciate it. Yeah, we do. And to answer your question, Travis, it feels great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Chad, the good thing about you is that we know you, and you know us. I mean, we've eaten at the Fifth Avenue Cafe so many times, we know the menu by heart. <laughs> yeah, Gates sure does. Uh, what was that, Travis? I just meant that you've uh, memorized the menu, because you've got one of those photo whatever memories. You know, you can memorize lines and things after you look at it just one time. Uh, I thought that's what you said. <laughs> so, Chad, have you turned in your notice? Yes, I did. Of course, all the waitresses started crying as soon as they found <laughs> out. Well, what can I say? Hey, they'll see a lot of you with all the times that we eat there in a week. And I've been meaning to ask you, are you a writer? I mean, have you ever written anything? Yeah, I've written some plays. You write plays? Yeah, all kinds of plays. You see, guys, I love football. And I've come up with about a hundred different plays, just in case I ever get a chance to coach a team one day. <laughs> I'm just kidding. What you're asking is, can Chad Ryan write some of the scenes, like what you guys do here at 7th Street Theater? Right. Watch. Hey, taxi, give me the Yankee Stadium and make it quick. The game's about to start. Sure thing, man. I'll get you there as fast as I can. Well, look, as fast as you can isn't going to be good enough. I need to be there to see the first pitch, so really step on it, all right? I will go as fast as the speed limit will allow me to go, man. Look, Gabby, I'm a little bit nervous because I got a bundle of money riding on this game today. I'm sorry that you have some money riding on the game today. Some money? I said I got a bundle of money. The Yankees have dropped the last three games in a row, so their chances of winning today are pretty good. But still, Matt, you should not bet on the games. It's not right in the eyes of the Lord. Not right? What's not right is the way the Yankees got robbed last night when that umpire called him out at home plate and he was safe by a mile. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> okay, everybody, how are we looking for this week? Well, Chad gave me an idea for a cab scene. We're gonna work on it so that we'll have it. Okay. And I got a good idea for Chad because he can do a British accent, so we're gonna do a scene together, Chad. Sounds like Chad's off to a good start. How about you, Kelly? 
I don't have any ideas for Chad yet, but I do have a good idea for Travis and Gates in the cab. Oh really? What'd you get? Travis is on his way to Yankee Stadium to bet a bundle on the game. <laughs> <laughs> we set you up for that one, Gates. <laughs> that was a good one, Kelly. You got me. <laughs> I will get you back. <laughs> uh, Rudy, I don't have any ideas for me and Chad yet. Well, you don't all have to do something for Chad, but at least having him around's given us more variety. Absolutely. I mean, he has given our pins a breath of fresh air. Now all we need is a new female to bring in some more fresh air. Mm. Well, I believe the Lord is going to give it to us. When? Soon. When soon? You know, soon. Uh, speaking of give, Andy said that she's sending us a gift. A gift? That's what she said. Well, what is it? I don't know. She wouldn't tell me. So when's it coming? Soon. Morning, Trev. Hey, Gates. Here's your script. For? The baseball interview. Oh, gotcha. So you okay? Yeah, I'm doing okay. You still bothered, son? Yeah. And it seems I'm gonna be bothered for a while. It's gonna be hard getting over Seth and Andy not being here. Yeah, I know. But we're gonna have to. It's not gonna make it any easier, though. I feel the same way. You know, Kelly seems to be taking it okay. Or she's in denial or something. Why do you say that? I don't know. It's just those two were pretty tight. They were always talking to each other like a gazillion times a day. Yeah. But Kelly's a pretty serious actress and writer. That'll keep her going. She likes what she does here. Yeah, she does write a lot of scenes every week. Yeah, that she does. I mean, that girl can write too. What was she like? Fourth in her class of over 250 or so. Where were you in your class? <laughs> let's don't go there. Yeah, well, let's don't go there with me either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, as soon as Chad gets here after lunch, we'll set out some bleachers for a backdrop and you can begin your interview with the greatest baseball player of all time. Billy, how does it feel to be the hero of the World Series? It feels awesome, man. I I'm just so excited, I don't even have words for it. Well, can you describe what went through your mind as you stepped up to the plate? Bottom of the ninth, two outs, bases loaded. They couldn't walk you as the two previous times or they would walk in the tying run. Yeah, well, it was nice to have, to use an old expression here, ducks on the pond, because now they had to pitch to me and I was ready for them. I was upset that they had walked me intentionally twice already, but this time I knew I was gonna blast it out of the park. You knew you were gonna hit a grand slam? Absolutely. It was the only thing on my mind. But you only need a base hit to win the game. Base hits are for sissies, man. People who buy tickets want to see home runs. And when the greatest player to ever play the game steps up to the plate in that situation with millions of people watching, that ball's going out of the park. Well, as a former player myself, I think it's kind of difficult to predict that you're going to hit the ball out of the park. <laughs> for you, maybe. Not for me. What are you, a lifetime 250 career hitter? I'm hitting 360. And when you see the ball coming down the pike as well as I do, you just know you're going to hit it out. I just saved my biggest swings for the right moments, and this was certainly the right moment. Well, confidence is something that you don't lack. And I guess in this situation you have to have it, or you might crack under the pressure. Every other guy in this league would have cracked under the pressure except for me. I thrive on situations like this. I am the greatest baseball player ever. And tonight I had a chance to prove it again. Now I just hope that you journalists and writers will start giving me the respect that I deserve. Well, thank you. You got it. We've been talking to Billy Harris, who hit the game-winning walk-off homer to win the World Series. And as you just heard, he is not bashful to let you know that he thinks he is the greatest baseball player of all time. But what Billy Harris thinks is true you, the fans, and this reporter might not. We're all entitled to our opinion. This is Arthur Johnson reporting. Hey, I heard what you just said. What's all this what Billy thinks? I am the greatest baseball player ever. I've got the stats to prove it. I'm the highest paid player ever. I pack them in wherever I go. 
People come just to see me play. On the contrary, Mr. Harris. People come to see you fall. What are you talking about? I'm talking about your pride. People are fans, but even the biggest fan out there resists the prideful things that you say every time you open your mouth to speak. Now, you may be the greatest player the game has ever seen, but that's not for you to say. And you're always getting the attention with the chest-pounding, tough-talking, greatest player lingo. And some fans like that, but most fans don't. Most people resist the prideful statements that you make. If a man can do it, it ain't bragging. That's what my father always said. And my father always says to let another man praise you and not your own mouth. My father also resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Your father? Who is your father? He never played ball. I'm talking about my father in heaven. I'm talking about God the Father. And those are two Bible verses I just told you, verses that you would do well to learn and take to heart. Okay, that was very good, guys. Good job, Gates, Chad. Thanks, man. Yeah, I think that part's gonna work out real well. Yeah, I think so too. Great job, Chad. Thanks. But what do you expect from the greatest actor of all time? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Rudy. Hey. Well, we are ready to go tomorrow. And uh, Chad's in the lineup, so we're gonna be introducing him for the first time. That's kind of fun. Yeah. Any word on the new actress? No. Nothing? Nada. Nobody's called, nobody's come in, nobody's asked anybody about anything. What are you gonna do? Uh, keep waiting and keep praying. <laughs> this will be what, the fifth show with just Kelly? Well, let's see, I was in Florida for two shows, and yeah, there's been two since I've been here, so that's the fifth one. That's been a lot for her to carry. I know, and God knows we need somebody right away. Um, but you know, this living by faith thing takes patience. Yeah, it's really hard. Think we're doing the right thing? I do. Do you? Yeah, but it's kind of like looking for a job. I mean, you can pray about it, but then you just have to go look for a job and hope that God opens the right doors. Well, I have learned to listen to Gates on these things. He felt pretty strongly about this, and when it comes to spiritual matters, he's pretty solid. I understand. It's just that sometimes you think that God's not doing anything, and you want to take matters into your own hands. That's what we don't want to do. We just gotta keep waiting. So, Chad, five shows in two nights, man. How's it feel? Well, I don't know how I did, but it felt really good doing it. You know, it feels really good out there. <laughs> Are you tired? Oh, no way. I'm so pumped up right now, I could do it all over again. <laughs> <laughs> you did real good, Chad. Thanks for carrying Gates in that baseball scene. Uh, what was that, Travis? Uh, I said thanks to you and Gates for carrying that baseball scene. Yes, uh, <laughs> That's what I thought you said. <laughs> Great job, everybody. Great job. Chad, you really hit it out of the park. We're proud of you. Hey, thanks, Rudy. But, you know, I really can't take any of the credit. You guys have all been great. Thanks for everything. Well, it's the Lord doing it, man. Just give him the glory. Yeah, it was great having you out there, man. At least now there's four of us, a lot more variety. Yeah, but we need five. We need another woman out there. We know. Yeah, well, maybe we can call some talent agencies on Monday. No, Travis, I don't want to do that. Yeah, but Gates, it keeps getting harder every single weekend. Yeah, I know it does, but having Chad out there tonight in full form like he was <laughs> really helped out a lot. Listen, guys, God's got eyes. He sees what we need here. He'll come through for us. I know, we just need another Andy out there really soon. Yeah, I know. Well, listen, if I can get you guys to help me as soon as the people leave to come out and help clear the stage, that would be great. You got it, Rudy. Hey, Rudy. Oh, hi. Can I help you? There's a great show you did tonight. Thanks. Thanks, I'm glad you enjoyed the show. Thanks for coming. I, we're actually just getting ready to close out. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't mean to bother you, and I won't take up much of your time. Um, no bother. Do you mind if I talk to you for a minute? Hi, I'm Lisa, and I'm from Tampa, Florida. I just auditioned for a theater position there. Um, I met Andy and Seth there. They were the ones holding the auditions. You see, my friend told me about them, but she told me they were on the 18th, and really, they were on the 13th. So by the time I showed up, I was too late, and they had already cast the show. 
Um, so I asked Andy if I could audition anyways, and she said sure. So I did, and well, she said she really wanted to hire me, but um, she didn't have any positions open there. So she thought if I um, came up here, you might have a position open here. And, um, well, that's why I came up here. And if I got the job, well, I could just rent Andy's house and live there. That's my story. But well, what do you know? Are you guys thinking what I'm thinking? Lisa, um, I know you've just walked in here and you don't really know any of us, but uh, your being here is really something. But I do know you. I mean, I feel like I do, kinda. I mean, you see, I visited with Andy before I drove up here. Well, let's see, I know that, um, that Rudy, Rudy is the producer and the director and the lighting director and the sound person. And um, that, uh, that Gates and Travis are best friends. And Joanna is the office manager, and um, Mr. Wheeler is the theater owner. And I even know that um, Chad the waiter is replacing Seth. I mean, she spoke so highly of all of you. But mostly she spoke about you, Kelly. She's really gonna miss you. Lisa, we were all going out for a bite to eat after the show tonight. Um... Would you like to join us so we could get to know you better as our new cast member? I'm sorry, what? He said we'd like to get to know our newest cast member better. Yeah, but I haven't even auditioned for you yet. But you did. If Andy wanted to hire you, then so do we. Yeah, but you don't even know me yet. Yeah, but Lisa, you're a direct answer to our prayer. And we're gonna discuss this over dessert and coffee. Lisa, you took a step of faith driving all the way up here to meet us. I mean, not knowing whether or not you'd even get the job. For all you knew, the job could have been filled before you got here. Well, I prayed to God and I told him I wasn't gonna call you or contact you before I came up here. Because I just wanted to leave it up to him. Oh, I almost forgot. Um, this is for you. What is it? It's a postcard from Florida. Hi, everybody. Here's my gift. She's just what you need. Love, Andy.